Anytime we are looking at opportunities for process improvement, we are likely to have a number of leads that we can pursue. Given resource and time constraints, however, we can only pursue a smaller subset of these opportunities. What method can we use to prioritize these opportunities? Which ones are likely to give us the most bang for the buck? A useful tool to use in this regard is a Pareto chart. The underlying principle behind this tool is based on the work of Wilfredo Pareto, a 19th century Italian economist. Pareto observed that 80% of the land was owned by 20% of the population, while the remaining 20% of the land was owned by the remaining 80% of the population. This principle is often referred to as the 80-20 rule. A common application in marketing is as follows. Pay the greatest attention to your most important customers, that is, those 20% of your customers who account for 80% of your sales. With the Pareto chart, we are looking to apply the same principle to process improvement opportunities. We are trying to identify a small subset of issues that account for a large subset of the problems we are facing. If we can tackle this small subset of issues, we will be able to resolve most of our problems. Consider the following example. Let us say I am looking into resolving customer complaints at my coffee shop. I make a list of the different types of customer complaints that I usually receive and collect data over a two-month period regarding these complaints. I am simply going to track the number of times that each type of complaint occurs. The final data are as shown here, with the complaints listed in alphabetical order. A total of 1,191 complaints were recorded with 43 different types of complaints. What did you say? 20 complaints a day sounds excessive? Now you know why I went out of business and joined academics? Hey, no smart Alex side comments allowed. Maybe I was running a chain of coffee shops, so 20 complaints a day is not too bad. The first thing I do with these data is to sort them in descending order of frequency. That will put the most pressing complaints at the top and the not so important ones at the bottom of the list. As we can see here, the top few complaints were wait time, cleanliness of tables, restaurant temperature, coffee temperature, and so on. Next, we need to calculate the percentage of total complaints that each complaint accounts for. Now we see that the top complaint alone accounts for 17.7% of all the complaints. Further, we need to calculate the cumulative percentage. This column tells us that the top four problem areas account for over half of all the complaints. In terms of the Pareto rule, we can go down the cumulative percentage column until we find 80% of the total complaints. We now see that the top nine problem areas account for about 80% of the customer complaints. These top nine problem areas represent about 20% of the problem areas. Nine divided by 43 equals 20.9%. The information we have in our table can be plotted as a chart that allows us to view the effect visually. This chart is known as the Pareto chart. The different types of complaints are listed on the x-axis. There are two y-axes, one on each side of the chart. The left y-axis corresponds to the vertical columns showing the number of each type of complaint. The right y-axis corresponds to the line showing the cumulative frequency. Applying the 80-20 rule, we can start at the 80% mark on the right y-axis and draw a line to meet the cumulative frequency. The complaints up to that point represent the most pressing complaints. These are the process improvement opportunities that we want to address first. The remainder of this presentation shows how to create the Pareto chart using Excel.